Virginia as a program has won three. Duke as a program has won 21, the most in ACC history. Outstanding officiating crew, Roger Ayers, Bill Covington, and Bert Smith with fitting a game of this magnitude of Virginia as the higher seed. They are in home white, Duke in visiting blue, and the Blue Devils control the opening tip. And Reese Beekman with his size and length taking Tyrese Proctor. And tonight's starting lineups brought to you by CDW, the same starting five, Jeremy Roach, and the four freshmen in the starting lineup for Duke. Kyle Filipowski has had two magnificent games already in this tournament. Roach with a runner, and Duke strikes first. Roach being guarded by Kihei Clark, and anytime Jeremy Roach can get to that right hand, he can go left, and he's effective, but he is much better going to his right, and you're going to see him in ball screen situations on the left side of the floor. These two teams met about a month ago. Virginia won in overtime. More on that later. As Beekman sneaks to the baseline, kicks to Clark, and they're using the entire shot clock as they often do. Gardner out to Clark, got it off in time, hit the rim. So no shot clock violation, but it comes down to Duke. Well, it's usually Virginia that celebrates shot clock violations. That time Duke making them use the entire clock. Derek Lively the second. Oh, he looked like he had a seam. He went back and found it again. Derek Lively the second his impact has been huge and not just because of his size he is a great shot blocker and rim protector can really run the floor and he is a lob threat he only played 10 minutes in the loss to Virginia back in February has become a bigger factor late in the season Armand Franklin no and Filipowski down to the rebound Franklin coming off that little fade screen and driving it he had 23 points in Charlottesville the last time these two teams played and has played well in this tournament as well. Virginia, as mentioned, put on a clinic against Clemson in the semis, beat him by 20. Duke had to work harder than that, beat Miami by seven in the semis after blowing out Pitt in the quarters. Virginia beat Carolina in the quarters in their first game. Tyrese Proctor has played extremely well here in Greensboro. Leaves this one short, but how about the hustle by Mark Mitchell? Well, Mark Mitchell has played so well over his last six or seven games. Very productive, averaging about 13 points per game, shooting over 55% from the field. Filipowski driving on Gardner, lost it, deflected out of bounds, still Duke ball. But Derek Lively, the second, got the ball down low, and he had a, an opening to the basket, but didn't take it, then got the same opening <laughs> because Caparo didn't adjust his position to stay between Lively and the basket. Four on the shot clock. Mitchell knows it. Air ball, and it's Virginia ball. Good block out by Caffaro on the weak side. He's got a strength advantage and bulk advantage over Lively the second, but Lively the second's a better athlete. On the wing, P.H. Clark misses the three. Tipped out, though, by Caffaro, who gets the start in place of the injured Ben Vanderplas out for the duration of the season with a broken hand as Virginia does something they rarely do, and that's turn it over. And Roach will lay it in, and a terrific start for the Blue Devils. So far, the Blue Devils' athleticism and their length has been bothersome to Virginia on the offensive end. And Virginia really scored in the paint in the first game they played. They had a 42-24 paint advantage for the Cavaliers. Beekman to Franklin. And Franklin for three, Virginia on the board. Well, off that penetration, just a beautiful fade screen set by Francisco Caffaro to free up Armand Franklin. He's ready to shoot. He is a confident scorer. Proctor lost his footing and got a timeout call. So we'll step aside. Blue Devils by three over the Hoos in the early going. Well, Duke had 22 turnovers in Charlottesville in that one possession game that went to overtime. And Kyle Filipowski, coach of the Blue Devils, just the fourth first-year ACC head coach to take his team to the final, try to become the third, along with Vic Bubis and Bill Guthridge, to win the ACC tournament championship in his first season. Filipowski open. 
misses the three. He has shot the ball exceedingly. He's done a lot of things exceedingly well in the in this tournament so far. Misses that three. It's such a difficult matchup, and Jaden Gardner drew the assignment of having to guard Filipowski. And Gardner is only six six. Filipowski's seven feet tall. Franklin. He is shooting with a lot of confidence, having a really good year. The numbers back kind of where they were two years ago when he was with Indiana. You mentioned the game he had against the Blue Devils a month ago in Charlottesville. He has become a real weapon for Virginia. Well, he has settled in. He knows where his shots are coming from now, and he's a purposeful cutter. And his guards find him. They know how to get the ball to him. Lively the handoff for Roach. Ball's loose. Lively to the deck. Finds Filipowski who lays it in. What a play by Lively. Not just to get on the deck and get the ball, but have the presence of mind to find a teammate. And who says you can't make an assist lying flat on your back? <laughs> Duke by five in the early going. Virginia the two seed, Duke the four seed coming in. Beekman, good defense by Proctor. Clark. That little pocket pass, but Filipowski was there to stop Gardner from getting to the basket. So Gardner had to step out maybe a step or two further than he would like. And here come the Blue Devils in transition. So difficult to get anything after a rebound in transition against Virginia. They only send one, maybe two, to the offensive glass. They'd rather take away your transition than take the chance of getting an offensive rebound. Lively puts it on the deck into the chest of Caparo. Job by Reese Beekman to ice that ball screen. Filipowski, no. Caffaro did a good job just to stay stationary, not commit a foul. And back come the Hoos. Beekman, high off the glass. Caffaro the rebound and a foul. When there is a loose ball, first to the floor usually gets it. That's a 50 50 ball, but. Derek Lively, the second, turned it into a 75-25 and a really smart pass to get it to Filipowski for the score. For subs of the game, Caparo out. Caden Shedrigan, a guy who did not play a single minute in Virginia's last two regular season games because of the injury to Vanderplas. He is back in the rotation, and he's had two good games here in Greensboro. He's really played well. He's done a great job screening than playing off those screens. And he's a little bit more athletic than Topperow. Almost saw it right there. Derek Whitehead, who's also playing well right now for Duke, in off the bench. Filipowski has sat down, and there's a foul. A tripping call there going against Virginia. Don't forget to check out our alternate angle of tonight's game, the New York Life Above the Rim Cam, streaming live on the ESPN app. Derek Whitehead in the game for Duke now. He is a, an outstanding scorer, had 16 points against Miami in the semifinal. And Armand Franklin's guarding him. He's got to stay with him. You can't be caught closing out to Derek Whitehead. He's a good shooter. Yeah, Whitehead has made 13 of his last 25 threes. Clark will sit after picking up the foul, just his first. And freshman Isaac McNeely. Comes in a sharpshooter, 40% from beyond the arc on the season. And McNeely, just a freshman, really good at coming off screens, ready to fire. But now it's his job to guard Whitehead. Everything around on the perimeter so far. Now a turnover. The conference's defensive player of the year, Reese Beekman, with a steal and a lay-in. A little bit awkward going up and Reese Beekman limping mm. a little bit on the way back mm. and grimacing. And saying to the bench, I'm okay. Let's keep going here. Roach. Well, there was a lot of contact on that drive. But no call. Isaac McNeely. Here's Beekman just doing a great job reading the pass. He knew where his man was, but he was playing the ball. And it's landing a little bit awkward when he took off. He looks like he just might have twisted that ankle a bit when he was going up. Well, you can bet he'll tough that out. 
staying in the game again he hey Clark is on the bench I think Tony Bennett is asking about the held ball there because the ball kind of stuck at the rim for a second and then dropped but they did rule it a held ball before the ball dropped so Virginia gets it on the alternating possession but now the arrow is going to do. Virginia is so difficult to guard with all of their movement. They run their offense with pace. Duke switching certain exchanges. Now Roach on Gardner. Gardner the turnaround. Can't get it to go. And Jacob Grandison down with the rebound. The grad transfer from Illinois. And with Ryan Young in the game, Shedrick has to be very mindful of the fact he's an excellent offensive rebounder. And he does it with position. Had a bump shoulders there with Shedrick, created a little space. The kick out to Filipowski for three. I don't think you want to double off of Filipowski on the ball side. You try to dig down in the post when he's right at the three point line. That was just an easy inside out three. And the Duke lead is up to six. Virginia with five points, seven and a half minutes in. Gardner. Won't go out of bounds. Duke ball. The Gardner was wide open in the lane, but ball pressure took away vision. And if you recall yesterday against Clemson, you know, Virginia cut them up pretty good. But part of that was there wasn't enough pressure on the ball. Right. If you let the passer see, you know, a pass discouraged is just as good as a pass denied. And Duke is getting good pressure on the ball. Freshman Ryan Dunn out of Freeport, New York, into the game now to guard Filipowski as Jaden Gardner has gone to the bench. Yeah, Ryan Dunn is an excellent defender, very athletic and long, but they're giving up some things offensively. Whitehead spins off the back of the iron and the rebound down to Dunn. And right now in the lineup, Armand Franklin is the one you have to be most concerned about. And he will head to the line when we come back. Now Duke running some nice crisp offense. They handled the double team in the post very well. Yeah, and the double team usually comes post to post, but Gardner decided to come off Filipowski, and that's a long closeout after Ryan Young makes the smart pass. You know, when coming in, it was so close at the top of the lead. Pitt, had they beaten Miami, and they lost by two in the last day of the regular season, would have been the one seed. Instead, they fell to the five seed. Miami and Virginia with a co-chance in the regular season, but as this week has gone along, there are a lot of good teams in this league. But Duke has shown for about four or five weeks now they are getting better and better. And Virginia, you know, what can you say? They're they're Virginia, right? They're just consistently good. Virginia is just a tough out because they make you play differently. It's going to be a slower tempo. They are they're a rhythm disrupting team. But Duke has established a pretty good rhythm to start this game. Young on the short roll in the middle ball screen, but he turns it over. Boy, he might have set a record for most ball fakes. Uh, made about four or five. Probably could have gone up with a shot at some point. Duke thus far in the game, they've struck a nice balance of getting pressure on the ball, but still protecting the lane. You know, they've got good gap protection and their length and size at just about every position has made it difficult for Virginia to get to the rim. He hit Clark is back in. Beachman's on the bench and Franklin turns it over. Virginia uh, one of the best in the country at not turning the ball over but they've already turned it over three times tonight which in nine minutes that's a lot for Virginia. Well, so far in the game Virginia seeing more bodies than they are wood and they haven't really been able to Stretch this out. Good fake. Now that is an up and under. Yes, move. it is. <laughs> Champ week rolls on on ESPN a little bit later on tonight. The top two teams in the Pac 12, Arizona and UCLA, going at it. It's also available on the ESPN app and two of the best players in the nation will be on the court Jaime Jaquez Jr. and Azulis Tubelis. Joe Lenardi has both of these as two seeds right now. They might both wind up as two seeds tomorrow regardless of who wins who loses but so it's for a championship out there but it also could be Jay maybe the winner stays west and the loser has to go to another part of the country who knows big picture what it all means.
Well, with, with the pod system, they should both be out That's west fair. for the That's first true. weekend. That's it's an excellent just point. where they go if they win, right. where right. they go for the regional. Excellent point. Mark that down, folks. Excellent <laughs> point. <laughs> Virginia's made two shots in nine and a half minutes. Two out of ten, three turnovers. They haven't had many open ones, and they've been jumpers when they've had open ones. Beekman, the jumper. It'll go. 13-7. Reese Beekman found it difficult to find open shots in the first game these two teams played. He was 2 of 11 in Charlottesville. But he's going to have to score in this one. He has done a remarkable job in recent games distributing the ball. 37 assists and four turnovers in his last five games coming into this one. Roach guarded by McNeely. Well, got the switch on that exchange. It's more of a ghost screen. Lepowski with a gardener on him and the shot clock at one. And a shot clock violation gives it back to the Hoos. Virginia may be the only team in the country that gets a standing ovation yes. from their fans on a shot clock violation. And it is definitely the only team in the country where we can see how many shot clock violations they have forced in their game notes. The great Eric John Bacher. That is the 26th shot clock violation forced this year by Virginia. Proctor does a good job negotiating those screens. There's a fade screen for Clark. Decent look, but it won't go. And back come the Blue Devils. There was very good late pressure on that shot. The hedge by Shedrick. He recovers to get lively. Filipowski. And that'll be a goaltending call. Count the basket. Hit the backboard first, and then Shedrick wiped it away. Pretty impressive stuff for a seven-footer. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, right now you really see that Virginia is missing Ben Vanderplas. He is out with a broken hand. He broke it here in Greensboro on a post-up drill in practice before the tournament started. He had gone in in a small lineup, and they had started clicking offensively when he got into that lineup. That's how they played against Duke the last meeting. Not only that, but he was a primary defender on Filipowski that held him scoreless. I see Ben talking to the guys, trying to help them with positioning and stuff like that, but I do think Virginia missing Ben right now, trying to get their offensive rhythm. Yeah, they are different, whether it's Caparo or Shedrick in there. Shedrick, the best shot blocker of the three. Caparo, the biggest body of the three, but there's no question they lose some offense. Mitchell had it and lost it, and it's Virginia ball. Well, without Ben Vanderplas in the game and available, well, Virginia's not able to spread the court as much with that smaller lineup. Knocked away. Looked like as Clark was elevating with the layup, he tripped over somebody and fell at the same time. Beekman, no. Shedrick, the rebound. And Gardner, wide open, 12 feet away, knocks it down. But that offensive rebound shows the presence of Duke's length and shot blocking ability. Shedrick was right next to the basket, but thought better of going up in that crowd, just kicked it back out for a, a short jumper. Jaden Gardner is such a good mid-range shooter, averaging better than 17 points per game his last six. Virginia's going to have to hit some perimeter shots. They are finding it very difficult to score in the lane against this Duke defense. Lively into Mitchell. Got a bit of a size advantage. There's the double, and there's the plus from Lively. The double team was small. And able to see right over the top of it. And Derek Lively did a really nice job of getting to the front of the rim. And you made the point. Duke is bigger at every spot on the floor. One through five. McNeely knocks one down. You really have to chase these cutters and trail them on their outside hip so that they have to curl because they're curling right into Duke's size and their rim protection. Make them make the contested two, even if it's close in, above your shot blockers. Roach, short. Virginia looks like they're finding a bit of a rhythm now with the offensive end, still trailing Duke by six. McNeely again. Clark gets another good look. In and out. And a foul call against Gardner. Virginia struggling from beyond the arc and Duke with a six point lead 645 to go in the first half. Well Virginia likes to double in the post but they got a switch and he got McNeely on Mitchell. 
They come with the double, but it wasn't a big double. 24 hours from now, some great performances on the court this week here in Greensboro, the 29th time out of 70 years this tournament has been played here. And it's Duke leading Virginia by six here in the championship game. Duke is really spreading the floor, and that is stretching out this defense. Mitchell cuts, hangs, had it knocked away. And it's Virginia ball. Tane Murray is into the game for the first time. Number 10 for the Hoos. A 6'5 sophomore from Auckland, New Zealand. Had hardly played for about six weeks. Came in last night, Jay. Knocked down a couple of shots. Hey, we had one three in the first half. I thought the one in the second half was a three as well, as well but they called it a two. But he had been one for 11 from three-point range on the season before he hit those two shots. Done. Too strong. Virginia now five for 19. That's 26 percent and just one for six from three point range. Well, they're not getting anything in the lane. Well, Duke has covered things up, but look how spread the floor is for Duke. They're moving it from side to side. And to your point about Virginia getting into the lane, they have scored a ton of points recently in the paint. They've only got four points in the paint in this game. You remember, they had over 40 in the paint in Charlottesville in that win in overtime over Duke. Uh, Duke's length, you know, especially with Derek Lively the second in, in the game, you know, if you force all these cutters to curl off screens, they're curling right into Duke's size. Roach on Beekman, shot clock inside 10. McNeely guarded well by Whitehead. Has to drive it, has to kick it. Gardner for three and the rebound down to Roach the who's now one for seven from beyond the arc on well, the last two possessions if you could if Duke could have chosen who to shoot it they would have chosen a three from Jaden Gardner and then a jumper from 17 feet from Ryan Dunn yeah, Gardner that taking the three is not really part of the Virginia offense for him a great mid range shooter but that was just his third three point attempt of the season. Long two for Whitehead. And you see glimpses. He's had injuries at the beginning of the season, then a leg injury in the middle of the year, and coming off the bench for Duke. But the talent is obvious, and seeing more and more glimpses of his ability. Yeah, I was going to say, he had 16 points. That was better than a glimpse. Like, <laughs> that dude is a bucket getter, yeah. and he gets him on all three levels. Like, that's not an easy shot he just made. And another Virginia turnover, therefore. Jeremy Roche got switched off onto Jaden Gardner and just fought him. He got low and used his leverage even though he was behind. And there was a little bit of pressure on Beekman and threw the ball out of bounds. Now, so far, it's been Duke's defense that has really disrupted the rhythm of Virginia. Usually, Virginia is the rhythm disruptor. But I think Duke being able to spread the floor so effectively has spread out this pack line defense. They can't pack it. <laughs> Running some offense through Lively. Looking into Filipowski. There's the double. There's the kick. Proctor for three. Filipowski can just turn and see right over the double team. Now John Shire talked to us before the game in the matchup in Charlottesville. Thought Filipowski was maybe rushing a little bit with the double. He is, you said, he can see over it. And he's made some nice decisions out of the double here tonight. He committed five turnovers in that game and was held scoreless. Clark turns it over. Grandison just took it right away from him. And is fouled by Dunn. Nice Euro step there by Jacob Grandison, the transfer from Illinois, who's an excellent corner three-point shooter. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. At the half, the All-State Halftime Report. Recent the guys will tell you about what went on in the SEC as Vandy lost to AM and into the championship game to play Alabama and in the Big 12. How about Texas uh, in the title game dominating Kansas? And we got to get Reese and the guys, and you're one of the guys in this context, up to ESPN for everything going on tomorrow. So special thanks to our friends at Wheels Up for providing plane transportation 
for the ACC tournament, and I understand the reservation at Wheels Up is actually made under Reese and the guys. That's how it, well, that's you, how it looks to them. You realize that was for advertising purposes only, yes. that we've got tickets booked on a Greyhound bus oh. leaving Greensboro at 11 p.m., and then we lose an hour with Daylight Savings Time. Correct. So we are going to be, I'm going to be in a coach seat on the dirty dog next to a screaming baby. I'm a little gullible, but I'm going to call you out on this It's one. true. <laughs> let's I'm go telling to, you. Let's go to Holly. I don't know how to follow up with that at all. <laughs> uh, listening into that last Virginia huddle, I am told that it is important for them to do a better job with the post trap right now. They're bailing out of it and not getting a good double team in the post. That was effective in their last meeting. They've just got to be a little more strong with it. Also, unforced turnovers. They're not ma they're making too many mistakes. It's uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic for Virginia. They've gone about four and a half minutes since they last scored. Deflection by Whitehead and another Virginia turn. Over. Filipowski blocked by Shedrick. Terrific play. Filipowski drew the contact, but the block was up top. Good defense by Shedrick. Really, what Virginia needs is to make a shot. And another steal. Whitehead ahead to Grandison, and he's fouled by Beekman. An intelligent play by Reese Beekman just to avoid giving up a layup. But Duke's pressure, its length, and protecting the lane. Like in years past, there was a switch there, so Derek Whitehead got switched off onto Jaden Gardner, but did a good job of breaking contact to get around and knock that ball away to get the deflection. But in years past, Duke might be a team that'd get out in passing lanes. They'd force a lot of right. turnovers with their pressure. This year, they're more a gap protection team, and with their size, they can protect the lane, protect the rim and put late pressure on shots and force you to shoot over the top. And Virginia's having zero success getting the ball into the lane and scoring. And again, if you haven't seen the Blue Devils in, say, the second half of the season, they are a distinctly different team than they were six, eight weeks ago. The loss in overtime in Charlottesville, the last loss they suffered eight in a row since then. Whitehead rattles in and out. Filipowski with a follow. He's Philip, got nine. Filipowski positioned himself on the weak side. Shot comes from essentially the right corner. Most rebounds are going to go long. And he muscled that basket. And the Duke fans, who appear to comprise the majority, loving what they're seeing, a desperately needed bucket for Virginia, thanks to Reese Beekman. Reese Beekman just got an angle to the basket and a creative finisher, but one of the few times that Duke hasn't had length near the basket to bother a drive. Look how spread out the Virginia defense is. It has stretched the entire 50 feet of the floor, but still they get a deflection and a turnover. We've said this on a few occasions. Feels like a big last minute and a half here of the first half. And Virginia cut into this deficit. Clark will go to the line. Well, Virginia has had some openings with that little fade screen on a ball reversal. And that time, Kihei Clark, rather than take the shot, just got a little ball screen, rub screen, where he could get into the lane and decided to go off one foot to get that shot up and got fouled. He hit Clark, fifth year senior, averages 11 points per game, scoreless so far tonight. We'll cap off Champ Week tomorrow with a couple of more championship games on ESPN and the app. It'll be AM and Alabama in the SEC Championship at 1 o'clock Eastern, and then also 1 and 2 in the America with Houston and Memphis at 315 Eastern. Remember, everybody says it's going to be so crazy. Anything can happen. They're all number one and two. Seed. One and two. Chalk. We had chalk here in the semis. One, two, three, four. Don't have chalk in the final. Tickets punched today, including Texas Southern, the number eight seed in the SWAC, which is headed to date. Headed to the big dance. Texas Southern has lost 20 games and they're in the NCAA tournament. A foul called on Caden Shedrick. Filipowski, when he came off that lane line back pick, went right into the chest of Caden Shedrick and drew that contact. And Shedrick still, once he got that contact, is able to get off his feet and make that block, but he'd already committed the foul. 
Filipowski in the quarters against Pitt. 22 points in 16 minutes. Rolled his ankle. They had a big lead, so John Shire didn't have to play him much in the second half. In the semis last night against Miami, 17 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, and he's already got 11 points, Jay, in this one. That's MVP stuff. And Kyle Filipowski, there have been a, a number of players that have been major contributors to Duke's success, but no one more than Kyle Filipowski. And he's such a committed rebounder at both ends of the floor. Franklin can't get the shot off over the size of Mitchell. Discouraged him. And when Beekman curled that screen, Derek Lively is second waiting with him. He knows Caffaro's not going to make a perimeter shot. Gardner at 6-6 over the seven-footer in Filipowski. And a foul is called. And for Filipowski, it'll be his second. You know, with Derek Lively able to play basically a one-man zone in the middle of the lane, that's where you notice that Ben Vanderplas is not available because he'd be able to space the floor. You got to worry about him knocking down a three. And so you'd probably have Derek Lively, the second guarding Jaden Gardner. And that's a lot different. He's got to pay more attention to Gardner than he's got to pay to Caffaro in the game. So with two on Filipowski, he sits. Gardner at the line. Told you about Filipowski's numbers this week. How about Gardner's? Had 17 and 10 in the quarters against Carolina. Had 23 and 12 last night against Clemson. And Clemson's a really good defensive team, and they've got size as well. But Virginia just cut up the Tigers with their movement, their screening. Got anything they wanted. Really impressive to watch. Roach draws a crowd. Needs some help. Just forces it up. No, a five-second call before the shot attempt, so it's back to the Hoos. I was thinking, are they counting by twos out there? I mean, <laughs> one Mississippi, yeah. two Mississippi. You don't see many five-second calls. That was more, that seemed like more than five seconds. <laughs> so 11.7 for Virginia to try to cut into the deficit. And Duke with a couple of fouls to give. They'll give one there. Interesting, though, know, the second on Proctor. You might want to get Proctor out of there. Timeout, Tony Bennett. Duke 24, Virginia 16. Cavs ball when do we come back. Kelsey is a saint. And Luke Hancock wore his Ron Burgundy coat last night. Now he looks like a banker. <laughs> 6.4 to go in the half. Gardner to the rim. No call. And then a foul. We'll send Armand Franklin to the line. Gardner took it hard off that keeper at the left elbow. And Derek Lively just sent it back. Yeah, that's a foul. He should have got that call, but Armand Franklin got it there. But you know, Dan, I know Tony Bennett was talking about tightening up their post traps, but I mean, for crying out loud, they've held Duke to 24 points. Right. And the problem's not their defense. The problem's the fact that Virginia can't score. I mean, Duke's defense has been excellent, and you give you give all the credit to Duke, but Virginia's only scored 16 points with Armand Franklin having a chance to increase that here. They're shooting only 27 percent, and they turned it over seven times tonight. They average eight and a half per game. So they have not looked like themselves offensively. And that's part of the issue. You know, anytime you play against a great defensive team, and both of these are great defensive teams, your offense has to help your defense. You know, you turn the ball over, and you cannot guard a runout. And Duke's had several runouts in this game. Roach has it, and the first half comes to a close with Duke up by seven. Lowest scoring first half, not surprisingly, for Virginia. Here this half, John Shire's got a lot to be happy about, but it is a fairly close game still. Duke 24, Virginia 17, halfway through here in the championship game at the ACC tournament in Greensboro. Holly Rose with John Shire. 27 percent. They're only three possessions down. It, 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 this is still is a close game. Holly Rowe had a chance to speak with Tony Bennett at halftime. Well, Coach Bennett, the very first thing he brought up was the turnovers. That is just so uncharacteristic for them. They've got to hold on to the basketball, play with a little bit more poise and composure. That's what they normally do. He also said that they've gotten quality looks. They just haven't hit them. They've got to start playing with a little more confidence offensively. But he said, we live and breathe on the defensive end. He said, 
We've only held them to 24. We've done a good job there, but now we have got to take care of the ball and make the most of our possessions. They definitely have to do that. Thanks, Charlie. They also have to figure out a way to slow down Kyle Filipowski again. How about a guy his age, his size, making the plays he's making from the elbow. He has been so aggressive getting into the paint to the rim in this tournament. Franklin with a great shot fake, and he knocks down the three. Like, talk about poise. That was a poised play with the shot clock going down, the shot fake sidestep. But Kyle Filipowski, John Shire ran a play for him on the left elbow so he can get that right hand and got all the way to the basket with it. Caden Shedrick starts the second half for Virginia instead of Francisco Caparo. Just gives some more athleticism. And a little bit better of a scorer. What a split at that. And a little bit too strong off the glass by Roach. Did a great job to get there. Well, again, Virginia's got to make some shots, and they ran the shot clock right down until the end. Armand Franklin didn't panic and buried it. On a short clock situation, a great pass when Reese Beekman drew two defenders. A chant of UVA now can be heard. Their fans have been pretty quiet so far tonight. Dehay Clark under the bucket, comes out the other side, hands it off to Shedrick, and it's over to Duke. Well, there's so much body contact. Shedrick got hit when he was going up with it and lost the ball. But Virginia with all the problems on the offensive end. Not able to get a bucket, turn it over seven times. They're down just two possessions. And this is the type of grind it out game that Virginia lives in. Rocker who took over the vast majority of the ball handling duties when Jeremy Roach went out with the injury. It stayed that way since Roach has come back. Roach into more of a scorer's role since, and he knocks down the three. That was a heck of a play by Derek Lively, the second. Set the high ball screen in the slot, almost a flat ball screen, and he slipped out of it early, and then they got hit on the short roll. That's not an easy play. Shedrick up strong, and that'll be the third foul on Derek Lively, the second. Now watch Lively after he exits this screen sets a little screen slipped out of it and Kihei Clark has to stop him on the roll but got hit with that short roll a lot of big guys will walk with that but he read it very well and got it to Jeremy Roach that's tough for Kihei Clark he's got to stop the roll then recover to a corner shooter on a closeout third on lively John Shire takes him out Ryan Young comes in now Filipowski the primary rim protector. Ryan Young, even though he can block a shot, is more of a lane protector. Young, the grad transfer from Northwestern, getting ready to head to the NCAA tournament for the first time in his career. Beekman puts such great pressure on the ball. You're worried about him instead of worried about running offense. Nice pass from Young down to Filipowski. Couldn't finish it, but it stays with the Blue Devils. We've just had so many. They have so many weapons on the floor. Roach. Boy, and another soft bounce for Jeremy Roach. He is such a good mid-range shooter. And that little short corner jumper, even though it, it's a short shot, it's not an easy one. Clark. And again, look at all the bodies and all the size that Duke has in the lane, making things tough for the Hoos. Take a look at Jeremy Roach here. They run three across with Kyle Filipowski out top. He comes off that double, catches it, gives a little fake, and Kihei Clark goes behind him, and he gets that little short mid-range jumper. Duke runs that play out of the same alignment quite often, and you don't know exactly what they're going to do. Is it going to be an up screen? You're coming off the stagger. Is it screen for the screener? Knocked away by Filipowski. And Roach fumbled it off his knee out of bounds. And he was saying to Filipowski, I was getting ready to give it back to you, big fella, but Duke can't convert. That is really uncharacteristic. Just a guard-to-guard -guard pass by Kihei Clark. 
And Filipowski got that left arm in the passing lane. So Virginia's now turned it over more tonight than they averaged on a per game basis during the season. Shedrick couldn't finish it. Stolen by Beekman. Clark won't go, and Filipowski the rebound. Clark trying to get the contact. What a steal by Reese Beekman. And he's like a free safety that reads the eyes of the quarterback. And again, the ACC's Defensive Player of the Year this year. A little surprised that Jeremy Roche didn't use that throw and get ball screen. When he can get to that right hand, he's so good. Proctor, step back three. Gardner the rebound. Beekman a little space. In and out. And rebound number seven for Filipowski. Make it eight for Kyle Filipowski tonight. And those are the open shots that are deflating when Virginia misses them because they haven't gotten that many open, open shots. Proctor fouled on his way to the rim. Duke has extended the lead by a bucket in the first 448 of the second half that he would join and Mike Krzyzewski Dean Smith of course way ahead of the group but some great names on that list Holly Rowe with a little background on how Tony Bennett first became intimately familiar with this tournament Holly well, you know he went to Wisconsin Green Bay and didn't really know that much about the ACC in his college days but he came down here he was playing for the Charlotte Hornets and a buddy of his took him to the 1995 ACC tournament and he said, I got there, I, I was with my girlfriend at the time, who is now his wife. We were sitting there and he's like, oh, this is different. He said, I grew up in Big Ten country in that kind of neck of the woods and I just knew this passion for this tournament in this part of the country is as great as it's ever been. He said, now I don't take a moment of it for granted, especially when we won it back in 2014. He said, these are the moments you live for. He is fired up about what just happened under the bucket. 1995 here in Greensboro, that's when the great Randolph Childers just went off and had an unbelievable week. And back in 1995, there was no Big Ten tournament yet. So he lived in Big Ten country. Tony Bennett came down here uh, when he was living and playing in Charlotte. And I'm sure like you, Jay, the first time you saw this tournament in person, uh, he was just kind of blown away by it. Yeah, once you experience it, the first time I saw it was as a player. Right. I mean, you saw it on television, but that, that's not quite the same as being here. And especially back then when it was eight teams and everybody played on Friday. The Friday ticket for the ACC tournament was the toughest ticket in the South next to the Masters. Roach with a three, and the Blue Devils have their largest lead of the game. Well, when a shot goes down, it seems like the offense is clicking, but what's been most impressive about Duke, this defensive effort has been magnificent. Franklin, no. Shedrick, the save. Well, that was a tightrope walk yeah. by Hayden Shedrick. Where does the offense come from for Virginia if they're going to get back into it? Well, that's one way. Just keep working. Well, that was a great second effort by Caden Shedrick. Tough to even make that catch off the little bounce pass to the middle of the lane, but he stuck with it. And corralled that ball, the little pocket pass went right off his knees, but he got it and got fouled by Filipowski going up and still was able to make the shot through the contact. The foul, the third on Kyle Filipowski, who's been great tonight. And John Shire is going to take him out, at least for a bit. Mark Mitchell back in. So Filipowski and Lively, Jay, both on the bench right now for Duke. And that's an opportunity now for Virginia to attack the lane. It's not that Mark Mitchell and Ryan Young are not good defenders. They are good defenders, but they don't have the kind of length and shot blocking ability that you have with Lively and Filipowski. Mitchell can't get by Gardner. Now back out to Roach, who's already got a dozen tonight. Young drives and is called for the offensive foul. His second. I think John Shire looking at Ryan Young saying, well, what are you doing? 
just lowered that shoulder and went right into the chest of Caden Shedrick. And now Young sits and Lively is back in the game playing with three. Franklin. Gardner the finish as crisp as the offense has looked in a long time for Virginia to the point where John Shire wants a timeout. Well, John Shire is not happy with that call that went against Ryan Young. He didn't feel that should have been an offensive foul, but a great play by Armand Franklin, drawing Derek Lively to block the shot, and he just drops it off. Duke didn't rotate, and the easiest basket of the night, but look how alive to prep you for the day. at 6 o'clock Eastern. Reese and the guys take a look at the men's field of 68. Bracketology breaking it down at 7 Eastern. The women's selection special at 8 Eastern and then at 10 Eastern. Even more coverage of both brackets. And again, our special thanks to our friends at Wheels Up for providing plane transportation for the ACC tournament to get all of our analysts and hosts and everybody else who is helping along with all the coverage this week back to Connecticut in time to bring it all your way tomorrow. Dan, you know what an admirer I am of yours, but this Reese and the guys thing has to end. <laughs> we have names. Let me take yours down to start. <laughs> <laughs> and yours is? Yeah. <laughs> Reese's eyes light up when you when you say, you know, I might go Reese and the guys tonight. Fonz and Seth, not so much. Roach oh, blocked wow. by Franklin. What a play. Roach is so good off ball screens when he goes to that right hand, and Franklin just timed that beautifully and blocked it right out of his hands. This it it feels like a big possession for Virginia. Dunn, not really a shooter, so he doesn't take the corner three, dribbles it in, kicks it back out. More effective in here, but he left it short. And an empty trip for Virginia, where they really had a couple of good things happening. Yeah, just a beautiful pass. Dunn just couldn't finish it. And you wonder if there's some footsteps that you hear as you get near the basket with Lively in the game. And that's where you feel maybe the loss of Vanderplas, right? If that's him standing in the corner. Lively, strong to the rim, and he is fouled. Right, with an open side. He, he exits those ball screens so quickly to roll to the basket. And that was just a beautiful pocket pass to Derek Lively the second. Watch how quickly he sets the screen and exits out of it and opens up. Just a beautiful pass. Out of the open side, open corner ball screen action. A fair. Kyle Filipowski has been tremendous again tonight as we check tonight's game track brought to you by Audi. This is three really good games in a row for Filipowski in this tournament. And this one's got to feel particularly good, Jay, because of what a struggle it was for him a month ago in Charlottesville. Yeah, I think it was the only goose egg he's had on the season. But certainly understandable when you play for the first time against Virginia. It's a shock to the system. And having that experience of having gone through it is certainly beneficial. And for those that say you can't win with freshmen, I think Duke has proven that wrong in the past, as has Kentucky. But this team is certainly proving it wrong. T.H. Clark back into the game after sitting about three and a half minutes for Virginia. And a foul on Dariq Whitehead, his second, the sixth on the team. So next one would send the Hoos to the line, where they are not a great free throw shooting team. Duke is a far superior free throw shooting team. They're at 77 percent of the season. Virginia's at 70. And usually when you play against Virginia, it's not a high volume free throw game. But Virginia needs to see the ball go through the net. I mean, they've continued to guard, and that's what's impressive. I mean, holding Duke to 36 to this point in the game is impressive, but they just can't seem to get a score. And Clark having a tough night. That one wouldn't go down. He still has not made a field goal in this game. He is 0 for 7 from the floor. But with Clark, when he drives, you want to make him finish. And especially because of Duke's size and length around the rim, make him finish a tough two over somebody. But if you over help on him, he's such a good passer, he can spray it and then they can attack. But Duke's done a really good job defensively in this game, protecting the rim, protecting the lane. 
Lively down low. Left hand. Mitchell. Lively, another try. Kicks it out to Roach. Duke's offensive rebounding has been a staple all year long. One of the top five offensive rebounding teams in the country. They've run a lot through Filipowski tonight. For a tough one. This is the three rebound Franklin. And Virginia not a transition offensive team unless it's off of a turnover. There's just nowhere to go. Yeah. Usually that pass would be open, but Derek Whitehead, Kyle Filipowski right there. And no chance to take the shot for Beekman because Lively was towering over him. Ten turnovers now committed by Virginia. And only average about nine on the season. There's still ten minutes to go in regulation. Whitehead for three. Still lots of time, almost 10 minutes to go. But the clock moves quickly into Virginia games, and they're used to being up. They're down right now in this one, have been behind most of the night, and still struggling from beyond the arc. Now two for nine. And Beekman was wide open off that weak side fade screen action. But Dan, this is where Virginia misses Ben Vanderplas. To have a guy that can play the four, the five, that can make threes. Mitchell into Filipowski, and the lead grows to 11. Just the low cross screen, Filipowski open on the left block. Well, he starts the Blue Devils at number zero, Dorian Whitehead. That's his third. Take a look at the look. You're going to see Jeremy Roach set a little on big low cross screen, and Jaden Gardner tries to go over the top of it. You can't switch it because that would put Kihei Clark on Kyle Filipowski. That would be somewhat an advantage for Filipowski inside, but there's Ben Vanderplas, best mustache in college basketball. Okay, he could be the Marlboro man. Yeah. That should be his NIL deal. <laughs> That's pretty good, too. I think it's fake. Man. Beekman at the line for Virginia. Big picture just for a moment. Both of these teams kind of look like they're in the four or five range for a seed. Maybe the winner gets a four, loser gets a five. Who knows? But just a little side story. There's a sub-regional first and second round right in this building. And, of course, both of these teams would love to be here. And as you pointed out in a different context, because of the pod system, it's possible both of them could be here but you got a better shot of being here as a four than a five the NCAA tournament selection committee the top seeds they try to keep them closer to home as a reward let their fans come see them and, and you know both coaches would love to be back here in a few days well defended cross screen screen for what a cut by Proctor done down with a rebound for Virginia the give and go still works, just didn't finish it. A really nice pass by Young. McNeely. Usually that would have been a pocket pass to Caffaro. McNeely, a good look. Yes! And all of a sudden, it's a six point game. Virginia just keeps grinding. And you have to be impressed with the offensive difficulties that Virginia has had that they've continued to guard. McNeely makes the makes the pass and then he goes off a little fade screen and they just lost him and Proctor trying to recover late and give help and Tony Bennett imploring his team to keep defending. That's what they do and these are the type of games that Virginia plays in. Lower scoring, possession oriented. Again, Filipowski. Bumped, no call. Proctor for three. Got it! How did he find him? That was a next level pass by Filipowski. Who's playing well in every aspect of the game tonight. Franklin way off on the three, but Dunn's got it. Shot clock does not reset. It's at 12. Franklin knocked away by who else? Filipowski.
What a tournament he's having, Jay. Here's the low cross screen and the pass. Double teamed. A two-handed pass cross court under the basket to the freshman Tyrese Proctor. And then Duke, when challenged, answers again with its defense, turning defense into offense. And Kyle Filipowski has at least one hand on that MVP trophy, but still seven and a half to go in regulation. It's not decided yet. Head coach of any program, let alone the Duke Blue Devils, he was an incredible player, and you are seeing his acumen, his IQ. This is the finest job I've ever seen in the first year of head coaching in my 30 years of covering basketball. He had an impossible task, and look what he's doing. This is impressive. Parents looking on with pride, I'm sure. John still looks, he is a young man. He's 35 years old, but he looks younger than that. Taking over, of course, for Mike Krzyzewski. Played under Mike Krzyzewski, and now here he is with his team up 10 at the moment with 721 to go in the ACC championship game looking at a, a very nice seed in the NCAA tournament. Well, John Shire did have some head coaching experience at Coach K's fantasy camp. Ooh. Uh, the K Academy, but he was coaching 50 and 60 year olds. So he had to take time out for <laughs> Pedia like breaks. Right. Yeah. So his players could call their brokers. <laughs> Did you coach against him? Were you a coach in that league? I did. I, I probably have the worst record in that because I was afraid some of my players would die. <laughs> Nine point lead. And again, the story tonight has been Kyle Filipowski 17 points, nine rebounds, three steals. Nice. Soon to have his 15th double double on the season. No other freshman's done that. Again, a guy his size, he's just making every kind of play you could make all over the court right now. Oh, the biggest point in the game for Duke. Again, that fade screen. But look, you have to pass out of it. He can't get all the way to the basket. Caparo doesn't look for his offense very often. Young down with a rebound. Physical defense by Ryan Young. But about the eight-minute mark to go in the game when Filipowski made that pass to Proctor and then got the steal. It was a six-point game. And then all of a sudden it was 11. And that might have been a backbreaker. Misses the three and immediately kind of looks over to the bench to say, that's on me. I shouldn't have taken that shot. Great footwork, little drop step after faking into the middle of the lane and getting done to adjust his position. Gets on the high side just a bit. And then he drop steps to the basket. Just beautiful footwork by the seven foot freshman. And what a difference in points in the paint. 40 points in the paint for Virginia in the first game, only 10 in this one. Make it 12 as Dunn scores off the assist from Beekman. So right now, Tony Bennett has gone small with Dunn and Gardner up front. And then he's got Clark Beekman and looking for some outside shooting from McNeely. Keep keeping the floor spread, going essentially high-low with Young and Filipowski. Filipowski turns it over. Clark is fouled and will shoot a couple. The foul going on Mitchell. Yeah, they got the second foul there, and that probably was better for Kihei Clark. He got fouled earlier, just didn't get called, but this way he shoots two free throws instead of taking the ball out of bounds, or actually it would have been one, one and one. There's more action coming your way next. The Pac-12 championship. Top seed UCLA, two seed Arizona, 10.30 Eastern time tonight. The Pac-12 championship presented by New York Life right here on ESPN and also available on the ESPN app. Lively returns. There is still plenty of time in this game for Virginia. And that's why being strong with the ball. Filipowski brought the ball down, showed it. Well, you show it to Reese Beekman or Kihei Clark. They're going to take it. Down to seven. Proctor into the paint. Blocked. Dunn got it. 
Clark for three. And it's just not been Kihei Clark's night so far. Now 0 for 8, 0 for 4 from three-point range. What an opportunity after just an amazing defensive play to get something in transition. Now Roach splits the double. It won't go, but he's fouled. Jeremy Roach, so good going to his right. And even though you're trying to take away that right hand to limit those right hand drives, he's still able to get to it. You know, back at halftime, Holly Rowe gave us a report. She had spoken to Tony Bennett. One of the things that Holly reported from Coach Bennett was they're getting some looks. They're just not knocking down the shots. They normally do. Unfortunately for Virginia, that has continued in the second half. And I just watched Kihei Clark during those free throws, visibly frustrated that he's missing shots he normally makes. Well, especially that last one. I mean, they have been getting some shots, but the truth is not very many. And they're certainly not getting much at the rim. You know, against Clemson, they were running Clemson off all these screens, getting layups. So that has not been available in this game. And even there, you're taking a shot over Derek Lively the second. And there's the double double for Filipowski, his 16th on the season. Good defense by Clark to take away that right hand drive, turn in the corner. Good faith. Filipowski steps in. Clark has it for Virginia. Somehow it's kept in bounds, and a broken play turns into a bucket. Boy, what a save by Reese Beekman. Not only did he keep the ball from going out of bounds, he saved it to a teammate, to Ryan Dunn. And I guess Ryan Dunn, I thought maybe he might have double dribbled, but I guess he just, the ball hit the deck when he's trying to catch it. As it often does in the Virginia games, that clock just keeps on running. John Shire will slow it down over the timeout here with 3.35 to go and Duke leading by seven. Virginia with an opportunity on a semi break. And it looked as if they might have thrown the ball away. It got tipped and Beekman able to save it. But how about this? Saving it to Ryan Dunn. with a seven-point lead on Tony Bennett's halves with 3.35 to go, Duke ball. Roach trying to get by Kihei Clark. Fade away. Got it! What a shot. Clark was slapping at the ball, almost got a piece of it. What a big-time shot by Jeremy Roach. Both Filipowski and Roach have been excellent. Roach now with 16. McNeely with a three. And it's a six-point game with three minutes to go. That's what he is in there to do. Now Virginia bringing full court pressure. Foul on Clark. That'll be the sixth team foul on Virginia. Isaac McNeely, the freshman from West Virginia, just gets a little wide pin down. And Derek Lively, the second, didn't get out to put a hand up. But Jeremy Roach going to his left. Watch, watch Beekman, or excuse me, Clark almost got that ball when he was bringing it up to shoot it. It's a strong move by Jeremy Roach. Roach averaging 13. Now has 18 in this game. Finishing through contact, going to his right. What a big time play by Jeremy Roach. That puts him at 18 points now with a chance to tie Filipowski for the team scoring lead in this game with 19. And he never took his eyes off the rim. And again, early in the year, he's doing a little bit more of the ball handling. Proctor's off the ball a little bit more. The injury to Roach, the roles kind of switch. 
And Roach has been, as he always was, very important, but in more of a scorer's role in the second half of the year for the Blue Devils. Mark Mitchell on McNeely. That's a lot of length. There's the fade screen. Gets the shot off. Around and out. And Roach has it for Duke. It looked like Ryan Dunn had an inside track for that ball, but Filipowski knocked it out. The Blue Devils looking for their ninth consecutive win, playing their best basketball of the season right now. And inside two minutes to go, up by nine as they turn it over. Numbers for Virginia. Beekman will finish. It's a seven-point game. Timeout, Tony Bennett. And that's been Virginia's game in this one. The only easy baskets are when they force a turnover and get... Well, in spurts here and there tonight, the Hoos have looked like themselves. Good hands by Clark, steal by Beekman. He'll finish it at the other end. They've, they've generated a little bit of offense off their defense, Jay. It's just in the half court, five on five. They have not been able to get enough decent looks. It has been so difficult to get open shots. They've gotten a little bit from the three-point line off those fade screens on the weak side. But anything around the basket has been challenged and really, really difficult. Duke has just shut off the lane with their length, their athleticism, and their gap protection. A minute 48 to go, Duke ball. And now it's about being strong with the ball, and you can't cross over in front of either Clark or Beekman. And if you try to, make, to turn your back and make an inside hand change, Kihei Clark really good at reaching around and getting a steal. Roach and Proctor both very solid with the ball. Proctor plays with a poise beyond his years. Remember, he reclassified, should be a high school senior. And then he drive to the basket. Wiley's in that dunker spot for a lob. Roach can't get it to go. Virginia ball with a minute 20 to go. Boy, tough catch. Almost turned over. Clark with his first field goal of the night, and it's a five-point game. It's almost like the broken play was a benefit. One minute to go. And a foul deep in the corner will send Filipowski to the line for one and one. Uh, he's almost an 80% free throw shooter in the top 15 in the ACC. Filipowski has played 34 minutes tonight. Remember back on Thursday against Pittsburgh, he rolled his ankle in the first half. And we've seen five or six of those from various players on various teams in this tournament. You never quite know how serious it is in the moment, but he came back in that game, got some rest in the second half because Duke had such a big lead, played great in the semis last night against Miami, and then having an equally impressive game here in the championship. But he missed it. And it belongs to Duke, wow. but they're going to look at it. It looked like it looked like Lively hit Dunn, and a little surprised that a foul wasn't called there. I guess that's incidental contact, and they can't look at whether there should have been a foul. It's just who did the ball go off of here? And I didn't see anybody get a finger on it. it looked like Dunn just tried to save it after he got hit. And now watch Lively here. He's kind of riding him out. And I thought that could have easily been called a foul. And now did it hit Lively? That's the issue. And it looked like it changed direction. Now did it hit Lively right here? No, it, uh, hard to see it on that angle. But the, the officials may get more with this DB Sport replay than we can get even and though it comes from all the same cameras. And again, the call on the floor is Duke ball, so they would need some pretty strong evidence in their minds to overturn it. That was an awful lot of contact. And the call will stand. It's Duke's ball. Basketball. 
The officials trying to get the teams back on the court. Both coaches using the opportunity to get a free timeout here. The whistles continue to blow as the officials are trying to get him. Here comes Virginia first. Well, the coaches are saying, "Yeah, I wasn't watching TV. You were." <laughs> As Duke comes out of the huddle again, four freshmen on the court, but four freshmen, each of whom in his own way, Jay, has grown over the course of the season. Again, a different team from what they were the first half of the year. Yeah, four super talented yeah. freshmen. But you know what? There were so many guys that Duke had that were out. I mean, Derek, Derek Lively is second out early in the season. Derek Whitehead unavailable for a good part of the early, early season. They've had continuity lately. They've right. had an entire lineup together, entire team together, right. and that way they can develop together. As the great Mike DeGeorge tells us in the game notes, they are 17 and one when they are a fully healthy team this year. Well, you didn't do your homework. You don't know his middle name. <laughs> no. <laughs> he gave us an Eric. We, John we know Parker Eric. And, I know. Don't know Mike's. The Lepowski missed the front end moments ago. Is where free throw blockouts are really big deals if there is a miss and Duke is long and athletic in that second slot going against Ryan Dunn and Armand Franklin and it's not just grabbing the rebound if Duke can if there is a miss they could tap it back out so Kihei Clark has to be alert back there too. John Shire's parents among the Duke fans looking on here in Greensboro. And John Shire's wife, Marcel. One of two, two possession game. Beekman the drive. It's down to four, 44 seconds to go. A beautiful use of the rim to avoid the block shot by Filipowski. Lepowski gets rid of it and Roach will let a few more seconds tick away and then he'll go to the free throw line. He had Derek Lively for the lob but an intelligent decision by Jeremy Roach to hold the ball just take the foul. And now it's double bonus. For a 75 percent free throw shooter on the season. Roach has been outstanding. And really, the two guys that carried the scoring load for Duke have been Filipowski and Jeremy Roach. Others have contributed, but I'm telling you, that eight minute mark when Filipowski made that pass to Proctor for the three and then the steal and the dunk, that was the biggest moment of the game. Those two players you just mentioned have 41 of Duke's 55. McNeely, tough step back three, short, rebound Roach. And he'll go to the line again, and the Blue Devils are on the verge of a championship. This Duke team was built on defense. The foundation was defense. And it emerged as an outstanding offensive rebounding team. But once healthy in the last eight games or so, really, really, the it started in the game at Virginia. In a game that came down to a controversial call at the end. But I think the patience of the Duke coaching staff, led by John Shire, and the mature approach to let this team develop and keep everybody in it has really been one of the most impressive things of the season. Franklin. And as we said last night, their seed may not reflect their current level because they did struggle some midseason. Like, say they're a four. I don't know if this is the four you want to get when you're a one. Who knows? How it turns out, but every every team wants to be ascending into the NCAA tournament, and the Blue Devils are certainly doing that. Well, it's got to be a very confident team. 
Goals have been defined. But this is one impressive defensive team whose offense has really blossomed over the course of this tournament. Beekman misses it. Lively's got it. And no point in fouling anymore. The Duke Blue Devils will win the ACC Tournament Championship for the 22nd time as they beat Virginia by 10. Pittsburgh, Miami, and Virginia on consecutive nights.